everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, and in today's video, we are going to kick off the instructional video series for the fiber system I've got here in my hands. This is the Spirit 2. Um, I'm not sure if it also goes by the name Spirit Pro 2. I'm assuming those are somewhat the same. Mine just says Spirit 2 on it, so I'm assuming it's just we'll call it Spirit 2. But uh, I'm really excited to try out this unit, you guys. Um, I have flown a few machines that have them on it, and I was very impressed. However, I have not actually installed one and set it up, so I've been playing around with it. Um, I've got my Tron machine sitting right here. As you can see, we're rocking the AR7200. So we're going to be tearing that out, and we'll put in our spirit. And I'm going to walk through a couple of things in this video series with you guys. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the unboxing and then we're also going to run through um, how to hook it up to your, your PC or Mac and run the flash update and make sure everything's ready uh, in preparation to be installed. I just feel like that's a much easier method. And then um, we'll go through the entire setup procedure, all the different steps. We'll talk about some of the, uh, the, 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 the pros and cons, the benefits and whatnot, and then we'll take it out for a field test and talk about some of the tuning and just overall my experience and my review on the Spirit to Fly Barless system. So with that being said real quick, let's let's take a quick out of the box. Now a lot of these other Fly Barless systems, and I guess I could compare it to the AR7200, uh, it comes with a lot of different um, accessories, if you will, in the box. You know, different wire patching cables and a, and a, a little dial unit for tuning and big old booklet of instruction manual and all this all this fun stuff uh this is relatively simple nowadays most of it it's going to have us download the pdf and everything for the manual and we'll go over that in just a brief moment but let's go ahead let's pop this open and let's kind of see how you should expect yours to to come pre-packaged again it's very very basic there's not a lot going on so i'll set this over to the side you do get some pretty cool little stickers uh i am kind of a sticker guy so I think they got a really cool looking logo, a sweet design. Um, they use the red and black kind of theme, which is my two favorite colors. So this would go great on any machine I own, any tool case or uh, whatever I want to use it for. So stickers kind of cool. Um, you are going to get, I like this. So most fly barless systems that come with your double sided pads, this is a little 3M pad. They just give you a strip just big enough for the system. These guys give you a whole damn strip of it. So if I accidentally mismount or I need to remount, um, I don't have to go down to the store or hope that I have some extra laying around. So that's uh, a big plus for me. I really like that they give you a whole strip. Very cool. And boom, here we go. So we've got the unit encased as it comes in the package. Very nice, very simple. Not a lot of complexities. Um, the unit itself, I really like. Again, red and black is always going to be something that draws me uh, into a product. Now, if the product's not good, of course, I'm not going to purchase it. But this has got the all-anodized metal case, kind of like how the Icon had the... I think it was the Icon 2 with the red casing. I bought that thing immediately. I loved it. But let's get us a good look at it here. You can see everything's nicely printed. Um, this does have dual port satellites. You can see here we've got our SAT1 and SAT2. Um, I'll be using Spectrum, of course, as always. But it's a pretty simple, compact, basic unit. There's no push buttons, no dials, no knobs like I'm used to on the Beast X. So everything looks great. And I think this is going to be a great rendition and a great theme for the machine that I prefer to use because I usually go with a red and black theme. So very nice. Now, as far as that's concerned, the only, uh, the, uh, the only other things they have in here in the kit is uh, what I'm assuming looks like patch cables. So if you're going to be using a receiver or like, like Futaba S-Bus or I don't know much about Futaba, but I know that sometimes you've got to patch over. Um, or if you wanted to use a Spectrum AR8000 or something. So it looks like we've got patch cables. I won't need these because I'm, I'm rocking the satellites. Uh, and then it, th this is nice too. So a lot of these, these flight wireless companies and electronic companies kind of scam you a little bit and please forgive me for saying that but they'll sell you the unit but then you have to also buy the PC adapter sometimes and I really like that they included it with the kit you got your little USB adapter here so we can do the programming and I will say one last thing too before we kind of jump into this is um, I've struggled the last couple of years with finding a fly barless system that works for me I mean, those of you out there that have followed me, you know, for the last nine years or so, know that, that Beast X has always been my, my system that I use as a personal preference. 
Uh, reason being is I'm, I'm an Apple user, so I use iOS, you know, iPhones, tablets, iMac, MacBook Pro computers. And a lot of the systems, when they very first started coming out, they were PC-based. They didn't have Apple support, so I had to have a little Windows laptop. I had to go buy one. It was a pain in the butt. So I've always kind of stuck with this uh, BSTEC system for that sole purpose. But now uh, that I've played around and experimented with the Spirit a little more, um, they legitimately have the software available to download for iOS systems. So I no longer have to worry about having a PC that's compatible with the programming. If I need to go out to the field, I can take my laptop. If I need to program it here on the bench, which is what I'm going to do, I've got my iMac sitting right here. Uh, and speaking of which, this, uh, this USB connection cable they give you is ridiculously long. So if you're doing it on the bench or at the field, you've got, you've got plenty of cabling to do what you need to do. So that's that's basically it, guys. That right there is the out of the box. That's all you guys should expect to receive in yours unless you're getting some fancy special edition. Um, what I want to do now is I want to jump over and show you guys how to connect this to the PC, whether you're using Windows or Mac. Um, show you how to connect it over and um, I want to go through the real quick updating process and the flash. That way you can make sure that your software is up to date. Uh, and we'll also talk about uh, how to power this if you've got it uninstalled from the machine. Okay, you guys, so jumping over to the very first step that I'd like to do um, before I install the system into my machine is I want to go through, make sure it's up to date. I just felt like this was a little bit easier for me to do. And also it gives me time to download the, the software and everything. So you can see here on screen that I've went to spiritsystem.com. It's going to be their website. And uh, what we'll do is we will jump over here to the, the Downloads tab, and we'll go into Helicopters. Now this is going to give you a couple of different options. You'll see here we've got Software. Now the version, 3.1.0. Uh, my original unit was under 3.1. I think it was like a, like a 2 point, oh shoot, I don't know, it was like a 2.8 point something or another. And so my, my software wouldn't actually load up until I updated it. But, go ahead and download your software, simply click on the platform that you utilize. They even have Android, they've got, uh, what do they call this, uh, Cherry Pie or something like that. Um, and then they've got your, your iOS and your Windows, right? So I downloaded my iOS one. Go ahead and feel free to, to get that done now. You can play around with it if you need to, but it won't really launch unless it detects the system. So, get that done. And then if we go over here to firmware, right, it's going to be version 3.1.0. Go ahead and download that too, but it's going to be like a flash. So uh, if you try to open it, it usually, at least on, on my um, iOS, it said that there was no apps available to open it. I was a little confused. However, when we open up the software, I'll explain to you guys how to do that. Uh, and then also for all medicinal purposes here, you can download the PDF. Oh, there you go. Mine was 2.7.1 when I got it. Um, but the online version here they've got is 3.1.0. So you can do different languages and whatnot, and we'll be going through this manual together as we also complete the setup steps, okay? So I just wanted to make sure you guys understood. Come here first, um, get everything done, get everything ready to go. So once all that's done, what we can do, so let's drop back over to here, and if we want to jump over to the spirit system here real fast, you'll see I've got it laying out right here. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead, let's let's pop out our little cable here, and cause we're going to be playing around with that. Now, one thing you will want to do also is I've provided just a little two-cell LiPo pack. It's a pulse pack. I think it's like a 500 milliamp, just two-cell. We can plug it straight in because the unit can handle the voltage. I think it goes up to 8 volts, so we're good there. Uh, I'm going to be plugging it into just a, an available auxiliary port, so I'll be using, uh, what is it, Aux2. I'll just be plugging this into Aux2 to provide power. Uh, important to notate is here on the side, as always guys, make sure that your plug pin orientations are correct. You want to get the positive, negative, and signal. So signal is going to basically be your top bar. So if I plug this in, I basically want black facing down. But you'll notice if I plug it in, right now I just yield a blue light, nothing fancy. But we're not plugged into the PC yet. So. Um, let me get this connected, right? So what I'm going to do with this... Uh, the patch cable is, if you look at the face of the spirit here, you'll notice the, the, the very top one where it says SYS, I'm assuming means system. 
we're going to plug that in. Um, again, now this has different colored wires. This one uses the, the orange, red, and brown. Brown is black. Uh, orange is white, if you will. So make sure, again, orientation on your plugs is correct. So let's plug that in to system. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just connect my little USB thing here. And this should be pretty straightforward. Now it'll light up and everything, but it's not going to detect much because we don't have any power to this yet. So I'm going to go ahead now and plug in my battery to my AUX2 port. Uh, you can use AUX1 if you feel like you need to. And then let's jump back over to the computer screen. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the Spirit Settings app that I just downloaded. Now, when you very first open yours, if you have not yet completed the update, you might see an error message that says, please update or it might say that it's not compatible, please update, something along those lines, what have you. It'll still let you get into this situation here, but it'll say not connected, and it'll tell you your version, it'll tell you your serial number. Now what you're going to want to do at that point, if you have not yet updated your, mo uh, your, your unit, is you'll come along uh, the top here, you've got all your tab settings, just simply go to update, and it confused the heck out of me for a few minutes, took me a while to figure all this out, but um, it's going to say right here that it wants you to select the firmware, um, which is what we already downloaded. Uh, in my case on iOS, I couldn't actually open the file. But you have to actually just go right down here, you go to select, and once you go to select, I was able to just go right here to downloads, and you'll notice all these are grayed out. I can't use any of them except the one that it's meant for, which is the Spirit 3.1.0 uh, uh, PDF download, okay? Now, I've already done mine, so I'm not going to redo it, but in this case, you would just double-click, hit open, and then you'll come over here, you'll click flash. This will do its little song and dance. Boom. Once it's completed, it's going to have you recycle power, so you'll want to unplug, close the software, reopen it. Now, once you've completed that, we should be all together now at this stage where it's got us as connected, our version, serial number, at this point, we could now install this into the machine and begin our programming adventures. However, one last thing I do want to look over, um, like most systems, they have factory settings and defaults that in some cases could potentially be hazard to your current setup based upon what you're using. What I mean by that is mainly servos. Um, for example, Let's jump in and just kind of look at a couple of, just a couple of quick things. Let's see. We don't need to worry about anything in this menu yet. Diagnostics. This will be for our radio calibration and things. Uh, we don't need to worry about servos. Here we go. Um, you want to make sure that your frequencies and your pulse settings are not going to cause any damage to your servos. Uh, if you don't know what your pulse values and frequencies are uh, in Hertz, you can go, uh, if you get online and go to Beast X Servo Menu, or uh, how does that list that? Let's go check it out real quick. If you get online, let's go Beast X Servo Chart. Let's do Servo Chart, I think it is. Um, but they've got an entire list of, of all the different servos, makes, and models. And then it'll also give you, yeah, here we go. So um, let's say I'm using, what am I using? I'm using a BK Servo on mine. So go down, let's see, Logitech, Mini Servo. I think they've got BK updated on here, but... Um, even if they don't, you guys, just, just search around for your servo specs, make sure everything is the way it needs to be. And then what I'm going to do before I plug in my servos and provide power, I don't want to risk any damage. So, um, I know that my cyclic servos are 760, and I know that my tail servo is, I want to say mine was 762, I'm going to double, triple check all those values. But, but make sure you guys check yours, okay? And then also your frequencies. A lot of them nowadays are going to be, you know, 333, especially cyclics. Rudders can fluctuate between 200 and 333. But if it's a high-end model, feel free to do so. But get that done, right? Just set those. We don't need to worry about things like limits for now, sensory directions. This will be for your, um, your rescue or, or stabilization. Don't worry about it. And everything else will be able to do during the actual process. Um, now with this here, I think, well, so once you make a setting change and everything, uh, in this menu here, it lets you back up your settings as well, uh, if you need to. So for the profile, profile settings are saved as data, files can also be loaded as needed. You can save all your settings from the unit to your computer, that way you can always load that up later. Uh, and then it, it appears as though, you know, within the unit, it's going to 
store everything as flash memory permanently. Um, so you can reset back to factory, factory settings and everything. Um, let's see, for resetting to factory settings, press factory settings. So what I'm going to do at the end of mine, just because I've made my changes, is I'm going to go ahead and save them. Because um, I haven't done so yet. So actually, I'll do this off camera because I'm going to make up a little a little tag chart and everything for mine. But just make sure that you've saved everything at the end whenever you make changes. That way when we go ahead and disconnect, we don't lose all of our settings or anything. So um, that's going to be it for this portion, guys. I just wanted to do a quick out of the box, a real quick review of what you get. And let's get the unit into a position where we're ready to go ahead and begin the programming. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do from now is I can go ahead now and I can close down the software. I can come over here and disconnect power, and then we'll go ahead and remove our USB. And what I'm going to do is, oops, that's in there, good. I'm going to go ahead and rip out my old Fly Barless system, get this one installed, and I will see you guys on the next video. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, feel free to follow along the entire build series. And remember, my friends, if Freddy can fly, so can you.